So the last scientist in our story of spontaneous generation is a guy named Louis Pasteur. Now, Pasteur read about Spallanzani's experiment, and he knew that Spallanzani was criticized for not allowing air to get into the inside of his container. So if we go back to Spallanzani's experiment for a second, if you remember, he boiled the gravy in both situations. He left one container open, but then sealed the other. The open container began to grow little life forms after a couple of days, whereas the sealed one did not. Spallanzani claimed that this meant that there were living things in the air that were getting into this container and allowing the life forms to show up, whereas this one, none of the living things could get into because he capped it off. Now, some people argued against him, and they said, no, Spallanzani, the reason nothing started to grow in here is because you prevented air from entering the container. It has nothing to do with the fact that there's living things in the air around us. You know, spontaneous generation still happens. It just didn't happen in this container because there wasn't enough air for those living things to start to grow. So even though Spallanzani's right, he's still getting criticized. And after Pasteur read about this, he decided to improve upon Spallanzani's experiment to eliminate that particular point of criticism. So if we're looking at Pasteur's experiment, he started off with broth, which he pours into a round-bottom flask. So same kind of beginning to the scenario. He then heats up that broth to the point where it boils and it kills all the living things inside of it. The unique thing is what he does at the end, he melts a portion of the flask on top and he turns it into what we call a curved neck flask. So it has this curved portion coming off of it. It's still you know, circular and open on the inside, so air can still get into the container. And that's really the significance of this structure. So now he has this curved aspect of it coming off. You know, the top portion up here is sealed. The only opening is here at the end. What this allows, it allows for air to get into the container, but all of the microorganisms and microorganisms in the air that fall straight down get stuck in the curved part of the tube. So Pasteur sets this one up and leaves this container in his laboratory for over a year. Nothing grows inside of it, even though air can readily get down the curved neck flask and into the contents. Finally, to finish the experiment, he breaks the curved portion off of the flask and lets this sit in his lab for a few days. After only a few days of sitting there, he has all kinds of life teeming inside of the, uh, the broth that's inside. So after sitting there for a year with nothing, with the curved portion of the flask, after just a few days with the curved portion removed, microorganisms have now been falling in here from the air around it, and they're starting to grow. They thrive in here because not only is it a wet environment, but there's nutrients in the broth that they need. They thrive and start growing like crazy. So Pasteur was able to definitively show that spontaneous generation does not happen. If it did, it would have happened in this flask. Now, down in the bottom one, these things are not spontaneously generating. They're coming from living things that were already present in the air around them, these microorganisms that are in the air around us all the time. You know, riding on dust particles, they're all over the place. So Pasteur was able to get rid of that little aspect of criticism that Spallanzani was taking and show definitively that spontaneous generation does not occur. Uh, last thing to discuss with Pasteur is one of his big contributions that many of you take advantage of every day. It's this idea of pasteurization. So if you're sitting there at breakfast, you got the milk container out in front of you, and it says pasteurized on there, that means the contents of that container were heated up to the point where it would kill everything in there, and then it was packaged and sent to you. So actually, even though we think of milk as something that usually has to be kept cool, as part of the processing for it, it's heated up to kill all the living contents. What this does is it greatly extends the shelf life of the milk, which is definitely a big thing since most of us you know, don't have the cow in the backyard anymore. So you have to make sure it's preserved long enough where you can go to the store and buy it, bring it home, you know, and still have usable shelf life for you to use it. Uh, the main thing I want you to take away from these four scientists that we talked about, you know, Reddy, Needham, Spallanzani, and Pasteur, is that the scientific process is a building process. And each of these guys kind of build and expand upon the previous one. So at this particular situation, we end with Pasteur. He is sort of the culminating scientist on this idea of spontaneous generation and disproving the idea that that could possibly be true. So you can see how each of these experiments got a little bit more elaborate, 
each of them kind of took the good ideas from the other person and then meshed them together with new ideas to improve the system to make it even better. I hope this helps sort of clarify these guys and their contributions. And as always, thank you for watching.